what we found that's working really well right now is high value content that's specifically in the actual uh, post itself. So what we were previously doing is making really long captions that were super high value. But what we notice now that works best is actually people are reading less and less of the captions. So we're creating more carousels or we're creating more content that can then be broken down into multiple posts. Um, so it becomes something that people want to save and come back to later. Welcome to Social Post, a podcast brought to you by Meet Edgar. Each week, we bring you a guest to inspire your creativity, breathe new life into your marketing strategy, and get you motivated to take action in your business. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned entrepreneur, you'll walk away feeling like you took your social media marketing multivitamin. Enjoy the interview and remember, what's possible for them is possible for you. And we can't wait to see your success. Welcome back to Social Post, a podcast brought to you by me, Edgar. And today our guest is Alyssa Coleman. Now, Alyssa is a productivity specialist. And one of the reasons I wanted to have her on here is because she is really centered around helping to design your business for things that you love to do, to provide you freedom and not having to feel like you're doing the hustle all of the time. So I'm going to pass this over to Alyssa to explain a little bit about who she is, what she does in her business, and then we'll get into a fun chat. So Alyssa, go right ahead. <laughs> hey, well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited um, to chat with you. But yeah, I'm a productivity strategist. I really focus on setting up businesses in a way that is automated, which is why I love Meet Edgar, um, and systematized. And I think what I notice happening a lot with uh, entrepreneurs is since so many of us are like idea people, that's like how, you know, we got in this world. Um, it's really easy to start getting distracted by all the things you could do um, and then kind of lose track of what should I be doing in order to get me to, you know, that, that the whole reason I started this business, you know, free time or location independence or, you know, to have more space to be creative or write that book or like whatever your thing is. Um, so for us, productivity is really about just staying focused on the things that actually move you towards that goal. And um, that's, you know, one of the reasons that we love Edgar so much. Oh man, that should word, I feel like always trips people <laughs> up in life. That is for yeah. sure. Um, so to start out this conversation, one of the things I love about what you call out on your website actually is how you've studied and broken down really productive people, people like Marie Forleo or Oprah, into the habits that they go ahead and employ in their daily life in order to get as much done as you have to get done to be Oprah. So can yeah, you start okay. by sharing a couple of those tips that you found that some of the most productive people um, actually use to produce in their life? Yeah. So actually when I went down this rabbit hole, I was like looking for commonalities. And what I realized pretty quickly is like every single one of these people was so different. Like they're, they're de I thought, oh, you know, there's going to be some, some crossover here where everybody's, everybody's meditating. I'm like, okay, if, if Oprah and Elon Musk are both meditating, I'm going to do it. Like I, that's, I don't need any more, you know, I don't need any more convincing. Uh, but everybody's, days looked so different. And so it wasn't until I almost zoomed out a little bit and started to think, okay, so what are the themes, right? So what are the things that people are actually, where do they overlap? That I started to kind of find the magic and see like, okay, regardless of whether you're like Obama and you're playing basketball every morning or, you know, whatever, whatever Beyonce is doing, where is the, where's the overlap here? And what I really figured out is that there are four main things that there everybody's doing, and I haven't been proven wrong on this yet. Um, so I'm like waiting for we'll, we'll see what like you know you know Bill Gates does or something. Maybe I'll, I'll have to look into a few other um, people until I've been proven wrong. But here's what I found. Number one, something that everybody uh, does is they all have some sort of entrepreneurial mindset um, practice. So actually, that's not true. I have looked into Bill Gates and he does this. His is reading. And so it can be different for everyone. So it could be, you know, reading inspiring books or books that are on like wealth consciousness or meditating or, um, you know, yoga, whatever your practice is, but specific to entrepreneur mindset. Because what I've noticed is that um, 
so much of this is a mental game, whether we want to admit it or not. I definitely didn't want to admit it. I was like, no, I just need a perfect strategy for this and then I'll be golden. So entrepreneurial mindset. The second one is some sort of growth. And you can see this with all companies. They're focused daily on how do I actively grow my community? And this can be like your social community or it could be in-person community, it could be your email list, whatever it is for you. They're focused on growth and everyone is um, it, on a personal level and a corporate you know, company level. The next one is nourishment. And this is my favorite one, um, which is basically, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> I heard a weird sound, but it was just, I think, my end. Um, yeah, but nourishment is basically like, how do you show up every single day and provide value in some way to your audience? Again, this is another place that Edgar like saves our lives because it's exhausting to have to daily show up and do these things um, if you're running the show yourself. Uh, and the last one is make offers. So whether you're Obama or Oprah, they are showing up every single day and finding some way to direct people to what action they want them to take specifically this is how you pay me or this is how you you know this is how you take the action that i want you to take in most of our cases as entrepreneurs it's you know here's an offer <laughs> here's something you can buy and so those are the four things and like i said they look so different for every entrepreneur which is the cool thing because then you can make it fit your life you know yeah, I love this idea that you don't have to go out and actually have a structured day that you just copied right from someone else because you're not going to feel passionate to create. And I know a big part of what you want to inspire people do is to get in touch with their creative side while being really structured in that. Yes. And I feel like that's a hard mix to make. So I would love just for you to talk a little bit about how you use this in your work day regarding to like social media, because I've seen your social posts be incredibly creative creative. You know, on Instagram, your graphics are always really beautiful. I've seen some cool Instagram reels from you. Um, so how do you structure your day when you're creating your social posts so that you can get the best creativity, but that you're actually having a structure around it? Yeah, it almost, it really does seem like an oxymoron. Um, and part of the reason that I resisted structure for so long in my business is because I thought it would make me less creative where I wouldn't be able to do things when I was inspired. And so I resisted it, but I actually found more structure equals more creativity, which is crazy. So what I do um, is really based around batching and scheduling. So it, specifically for social media content, I will batch like tasks together. So if I'm like looking for images, I will go on an image spree and I'll just look for all my images. Then I'll go on a content writing spree. Then as I'm filming videos, I film all my videos together and then I'll film all my reels and you know, or however you do it. Um, but what I was previously doing and the big distinction here is that I was batching things in like sequential order instead of what I do now, which is what I call assembly line order. So I would think, okay, I'm going to schedule my Instagram posts. I'm going to find an image. I'm going to write a caption. I'm going to schedule it. And then I'm going to add hashtags. That makes sense, right? Like in my brain, that made total sense. But what I found is if I did all images, then all copy, then all, you know, scheduling, I can move so much quicker. It's insane and I'm also so much more creative because I don't when you shift tasks like if I go from writing copy to scheduling you have to totally like shift to a different you know part of your brain and so I could stay in this really cool creative place where I'm creating cool graphics or I'm you know in, an, in a writing inspired mode or whatever it is um, and I find I can be more creative but also work quicker and and more effectively you know. Oh man, that is a whole nother layer of batching that I've never even thought of because we are all about batching here at Meet Edgar, but I yes. kind of agree. You think about it as writing, scheduling, and like finding the images as batching, but even going further, that's a really awesome tip. Um, and it clearly works for you. You know, you've grown a community on Instagram of over 20,000 followers. Can you talk a little bit about some of the habits that you've developed in order to keep those followers engaged and continue to bring more people to your content? Yeah, so I do think specifically with social, it's good to have somebody on your team or somebody that you look to that's kind of like keeping on top of the trend. So that's another great reason to like listen to podcasts like this or whatever it is that you like to follow um, because it is always changing. And I think actually going with those trends is so powerful. 
Um, so what we found that's working really well right now is high value content that's specifically in the actual uh, post itself. So what we were previously doing is making really long captions that were super high value. But what we notice now that works best is actually people are reading less and less of the captions. So we're creating more carousels or we're creating more content that can then be broken down into multiple posts. Um, so it becomes something that people want to save and come back to later. But overall, what I found worked really well with um, social is using it as the place that I complete my like nourishment tasks. So this is where I'm really focused on highly nourishing my audience. And I don't necessarily use social primarily for making sales or making offers. That actually happens in the back end of my business or on my email list or you know through my sales funnels or on webinars. And I primarily focus on using social as this place to like create a relationship and provide value for my audience. And regardless of algorithms and trends on social, I find that that works really well. And that's what people, that's what we want out of social, right? We go there for like a good time. <laughs> um, and so I kind of try to keep it um, a bit fun and educational. Yeah, I love this word nourishment because you always hear like value and stuff like yes. that. But I feel like nourishment takes it to another mindset of just like creating those really deep relationships so that when it comes time to sell in these other avenues, it makes it really fun for people. So that's an awesome tip as well. Um, so speaking yeah. of keeping up on trends and stuff, I would love for yeah. you to dive into how you're using Instagram Reels, the newest Instagram thing right now, because yeah. I feel like that's something that people are a little afraid to dip their toes in. So what tips do you have for like what type of content's working well, how to use it, anything you can offer? Yeah, so I'm by no means an expert. I'm like kind of a real noob too. And I was like nervous. I was probably same as all of you guys like, oh, here's this new thing I need to figure out. And like right away, I was not using TikTok. So right away, the reels I was seeing were like, so, I was like, these people, like, are they editing? Like what, <laughs> these are so cool and like creative and smart. Um, but I wanted in on the action because so you can get so many views on reels right now. And some of my clients are growing their email list or sorry, their social media following by a thousand people a week using reels because their reels are just going viral. So I'm like, okay, I got to get in on this now. What I'm doing because I'm like, you know, systems person is whatever. So every single week I put out a video on social media. I also share that video um, everywhere else, specifically using Edgar. We actually have a whole webinar on how I do that. But every week I put out a video. So I'm like, okay, where do reels fit into this? And now what I do is after I film the video, I film the reel right afterwards with basically the cold notes of what I talk about in that video for that week. So if the video has like three main topics obviously there's like a lot to talk about for each of those you know points you know three ways to x y and z in the reel i'll just kind of like tell them really quick three ways one two three and then in the comment i'll direct them back to that video so it's i feel like it's this kind of like you know recycle method but also I don't have to come up with a new idea for real. So if you're like, oh, I'm already putting out content, I don't want to come up with something new, um, try that. It's working really well for us. And it, and it takes the pressure off too, you know, because you're like, it's just something fun and, and cute. And we're getting a lot of great feedback. So I say like, go for it. Oh man, guys, if you haven't tried reels, if this didn't convince you a thousand followers a day gaining, that is incredible. I love that so much. And I kind of agree, the more fun you can have with your content, like that energy translate onto the social platforms, as weird as that sounds. Totally. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, cool. So we are having this chat right before the holiday season, right before people are about to get so busy with different things that aren't a part of their normal life. Is there anything that you can offer our community that they can do this holiday? season to make sure that their productivity is staying up while still getting to like relax with their family and friends and enjoy that? Like what do you do or what have you seen work well for these times that are a little bit different in structure? Yeah, to me the best thing that you can do is be really serious with your calendar. So make sure that what you're not doing is like, okay, I have this giant to-do list and I'm going to be working from nine to five, but then five rolls around and you're kind of still working and then it's six and then you like take your laptop to the couch with you and then, you know, work kind of bleeds into all these other areas of life. This is the worst time to do that. 
So I really recommend like, okay, be realistic with your calendar and say, I am not working from the 20th to the 30th or whatever, you know, even if it's like 24 to 27, I'm not working those days. Just be very real with yourself. And then in the, the days before and after that, be very clear with what you're actually going to accomplish during those times. And then when that's over, you're done, right? So when you kind of just let things bleed into the next day, into the next day, then you're not going to be able to turn off your brain out of like work mode when you're, you know, it's, it's, it's Christmas Eve or something and you're at a holiday party or whatever it is. And, and you're like in the back of your mind, kind of thinking about that thing that you didn't get to. No, you're like my rule around this time of year is to set really strict boundaries with work. And that actually makes you so much more productive because you know, at 6 PM I'm done. So I better hustle and like get this done before six because I'm serious, you know? Yeah, that makes so much sense. Those boundaries and structures that we think are providing less time for us to work actually do create more work in that less time. So I love that tip. Are you changing any of your messaging on social media or your emails for the holiday season? Like, what do you think about for that? Yeah, um, I'm not necessarily changing my messaging to, to me, like my, my content is always sort of a conversation. So the conversation is changing a little bit in terms of like right now, a lot of what people are thinking of in, in my community is planning for the new year. So we're all talking about planning, how to do that. And when I'm showing up with my nourishment, I'm giving them, you know, resources or tools or like how to show up and plan for the new year. So I wouldn't say I'm changing my messaging, but I am helping people, um, you know, through the topics that I know they're thinking of right now or that we've been having conversations about. Yeah, that's awesome. Just making sure that you're really resonating with what people are telling you right now are their biggest struggles. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good tip as well. Do you find when you're doing this research that you have conversations with like your current clients or do you go out and you seek people like who aren't your current clients to talk to them about? How do you really pinpoint what pain points people are having um, and how do you use social media to like do that specifically? Yeah. One of the best ways that I think everybody should do, especially when you're first starting your business and you're not, you're like, I don't know what people want. Like I kind of, I know what I'm good at, but I'm not hundred percent sure that I'm even saying things in the way that they need to hear them. What I like to do, no matter, like depending on where your audience is. So you could uh, do this on Instagram stories or in a post, or you could just reach out to people or you could do it in your email list. But I want you to ask people, if I could wave a magic wand and solve one of your problems right now, what would it be and why? And when you ask people that, you basically get the key to like what's going on in their brain because they're telling you, I need this problem solved and I don't freaking know how to solve it. Therefore, I need you, my fairy godmother, to like do this for me. Um, and so that's a really great way to find things out. Um, it's also good to ask your current clients, but I do find that the the conversation is a bit different because they've already gone through certain processes that you teach. So it kind of like their responses are much different than somebody who's like pre, you know, knowing your philosophy and your process. So that's, that can be good too, but more for like uh, improving your programs and, and stuff like that. Oh, that question is amazing. And what a fun one. I bet you get so many great responses from it. I'm definitely going to take that tip right there. <laughs> um, and you know what? Sometimes I get other responses that are like kind of silly and fun. Like if someone would say like, you know, clean my dishes or something like that. <laughs> and I would actually use that in my copy. Like, okay, you're going to be so much more productive that you'll actually have time to get to those dishes that I know are piling up in the sink. So all answers are good answers. I accept all answers. <laughs> that is genius. I love that taking their life style problems actually into your business <laughs> solutions. That's so beautiful. Um, cool. So we started this conversation talking a lot about a habit that you've noticed a lot of people do, which is things like reading in the morning, like you mentioned with Bill Gates. Do you have any business books or productivity books that have really influenced the way that you work and the way you've built your business that you would recommend? Oh gosh, this is a dangerous question. We can be here for a while. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you a couple that I absolutely love. So the first one is like tried and true, oldie but goodie, which is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Covey. If you haven't read it yet, it's like, I just feel like everybody should read this, whether you have a business or not. Um, it changed my life. I follow all seven. Um, the other one that I is more... Um, 
current that I absolutely love is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And if you're looking to get more systematized in your business, in your life, this is a very like actionable book. Um, so if you're the type of person who's like, I don't want just like theory, someone tell me what the freak to do. This is, you know, this, you'll like that one. Oh yeah. I have signed up for James Clear's newsletter and I love his tips. I'll definitely have to grab that book. It sounds incredible. Yeah. It's a good <laughs> audio book too. I listen to it. Very cool. I love it. Um, cool. Well, this conversation has been amazing and you've given us a lot of actionable tips to take away. And I would love for you just to share with our community anything else that you want to inspire them to be creative with their social content while staying productive. And then let us know where people can find you online, your website, your social media, if people want to dig a little bit further into this productivity journey. Yeah. So one tip to be creative on social I think one of my favorite ones is to use, to create a piece of content and then use parts of it over and over and over again. So rather than creating more and more and more and always trying to come up with something new to say, create a couple things that are like, you know, you're just like masterpieces and then slowly share different parts of it because I think that does create more high quality content that you can really stand behind um, and plus it's productive because you just create one thing and then you know you like take little parts of it uh, and then if you want to follow me or like find out more about productivity you can find me at alyssacoleman.ca which is my website or follow me on instagram at alyssacoleman.ca as well Awesome. I'll put those links in the show notes, guys. Please subscribe to Social Post to get another episode every Wednesday. Thank you so much for your time and your productivity tips today, Alyssa. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and be sure to keep the conversation going with us on social. We're at Meet Edgar on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So let us know your biggest takeaway from today's episode and don't forget to tag us. Visit www.meetedgar.com and start a free trial to up-level your social media marketing strategy today. Happy posting!